Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. and today we're doing something different. Today we're breaking down INFP body language and today I have the help of INFP YouTuber Casual Cognition and we're gonna look over one of her videos, one of her most recent videos and we're gonna understand and discuss her body language and really pay attention now. So really look at what she's doing and how she says something and how she says it with her face. Every personality type has a set of unique expressions that are unique to their personality type. So uh, what I've found is so if you can learn to see what parts of the face a person will speak with and how they will say it and how they will emphasize it, they will give a different quality, they will show a different personality, they will show energy and use their face to back up what they are saying. People talk not just with their voice and with their words but also with their face and with their hands. And that is interesting. So the INFP smile can best be described as genuine, authentic and unintentional. It starts out in the outer part of the face, in particular in the outer lower jaws. And then it stretches inside, especially to the shin and the lower lips. Uh, but then it cannot reach further and that often means the smile can appear tense as it's coming from the lower parts but cannot reach all the way up to the outer part of the face. That means the smile is typically without warmth but with a very authentic and real quality to it. It looks as if this smile is coming from out of nowhere and that it's coming uh, against the INFP's will if <laughs> to say something. Uh, it's just happening instinctively. It just comes out. INFP eye contact comes off as highly self-reflective. The eyes fade off, go down streams, disappear and while they talk they naturally do these motions going inside and then out, going inside and then out, going inside and then out. The INFP body language comes off as uh, also multifaceted as while they are in a drifting state their eyes are still in a darting position going from point to point from that place to that place with twists and turns sometimes jumping from one point to the other and then back. In an INFP you will first notice four primary functions. You'll notice two flow functions and you'll notice two stress functions. What that means is when an INFP is in flow they will demonstrate introverted feeling and introverted intuition and when an INFP is in stress they will demonstrate extroverted sensing and extroverted thinking. So for introverted feeling what you can see is going from a kind of naive innocence and uh, just talking about something to suddenly becoming serious and deadpan to that dramatic switch between FI and TE. What you see is uh, INFPs constantly go, now. Nah, okay, I have to be serious now. Okay, I have to be a bit uh, real now. I have to give some reasons. I have to give an explanation. I have to s explain what I'm doing or why I'm thinking this way or what I mean with it. And it can be just first being yourself and just doing something and then realizing that, okay, I have to focus now. I have to be serious. And I have to give people an explanation for what I'm doing or why I did it or why I was so silly or why I said that. It's becoming self-aware and switching from that self-awareness, uh, uh, that natural self-expression and uh, dialogue with yourself to, okay, what the, does the tribe think about me and how can I be um, taken seriously by the tribe? With introverted intuition, that function is primarily visible when you go inside. So it's going inside and it's taking something from the inner world and putting it in the real world. So it's for 9FP it is that detachment of uh, dissociating from your environment and from what's happening around you to that hyper awareness of okay so the camera is on me what am i looking at what am i doing what am i saying who are people who are watching me okay nobody's watching me <laughs> that's uh coming back and it can also be associated with a state of shock in a sense of uh, oh yeah there's a world around me oh yeah it's that waking up versus going to sleep waking up versus going to sleep <laughs> so it's a very dramatic expression and uh in ni infps appear relaxed and uh 
uh, like at their best, but in SC they appear a bit stressed and a bit, okay, what's happening? What did I miss? Now this is a bit more difficult to capture, but introverted feeling is primarily located in the shin and um, introverted intuition in the lower eyelids. So most likely when a person is using NI, they are using the lower eyelids and it's not just using the lower eyelids, but it's uh, a relaxed use of the lower eyelids. So it's a relaxation in the lower eyelids when you are drifting or when you are going away into yourself. This is different from introverted sensing, which is often a tensing of the muscles around the lower eyelid, like precision going in. Okay, so what am I saying? What are the details? What are the numbers? What are, am I missing? What am I looked at? Did I bring that up? Did I remember to say that? And um, similarly, introverted feeling is something that uh, is associated with a relaxation of the lower lips. Well, introverted thinking types can come off as critical because they often put out their shin muscles and they go, okay, is that true or not? Introverted feeling types often relax the lower, li uh, lower lips and the muscles around this part of the shin as they listen to somebody else, showing empathy and understanding and acceptance and um, often a blind acceptance, a blind understanding, a blind innocence to what is being said. Now extroverted sensing is primarily visible in the chic region of the face and it's associated with, uh, for an INFP, a stressed tensing of the muscles around the chic region. It is uh, holding yourself down, it is strapping yourself down, holding yourself back, it's putting on a helmet, it's putting on a shield in a sense to protect yourself from something. So it can look as if you are uh, trying to protect yourself from uh, what other people think about you or how other people perceive you or to uh, act as if you are cool and that you are tough and that you can endure or handle whatever is going to be thrown at you. So TE is associated with the tensing of the muscles around the sheiks and that is why the INFP smile often tends to lead to a tensing of the sheiks rather than a relaxation around the sheik region. And that's how you distinguish extroverted feeling from extroverted thinking. Similarly, extorted sensing is in the upper part of the face and around the brows and the upper eyelids. So what you can do when you look for extorted sensing is you can look for a kind of tense attention, a tense focus, a real sign of listening. While extorted intuition tends to go into a state of surprise, pulling up the muscles, going like, whoa, what is that? Extorted sensing tends to rather pull the muscles down to really pay attention. Okay, what are you saying now? What are you meaning? What are your intentions? What are you doing? What's happening? And this is what to done physically in order to give you a more conscious awareness of your environment. Now, INFPs, interestingly, don't demonstrate real extroverted intuition in the sense that an ENFP does. What they instead demonstrate is an introverted intuition that is adaptable and that requires more perspective shifting. So they demonstrate intuitive perceiving. Their eye contact is darting, going from point to point. Did I say that? What did that mean? What did that come from? Rather than that excited, enthusiastic, oh, and what's happening there? And oh, what's that? And where's that coming from? Where does that gonna lead? And what is this? This is interesting. And that's just uh, going to create a very different expression. And what you're seeing is INFPs they are, their eye contact is focused around these parts of the eyes, the lower eyelids and also a little bit around the outer parts, giving them an open-minded uh, quality as opposed to an INFJ's eye contact, giving them a kind of uh, ability to adjust what they say and what, how, what they think and how they say something to the situation. So what you want to look for in an INFP is not necessarily extroverted intuition as much as intuitive perceiving, a softer quality of extroverted intuition. Similarly, INFPs have feeling perceiving and that's primarily located around this part. And we saw that before when we talked about the smile. This is where the INFP's smile starts and this is what creates the authentic expression around the INFP. Because these muscles are also noticeably relaxed. They are not looking as if they are cal calculating or going, is that true, does that connect? Uh, what can I do to top that? How can I beat that? How can I do that better than the other person is doing it? It is not competitive at all. It is uh, 
uh, relaxation so it is uh, associated with uh, just accepting a situation or reflecting on what is happening or what is being said to you and listening and uh, empathizing and going do I relate to that do I connect with that is that true for me do I see these things the same way uh, how would I say this? Do I have the same opinions as that person? Would I do this the same way he would? It is that ability for feeling perceiving types to compare and contrast their own behavior and actions against the actions of other people in order to determine what is ethical and what is right and wrong. So now I'm going to go over some basic INFP cues that you can learn to look for in an INFP or in a person with similar cognitive functions. Relativizing. Relativizing is when you kind of go back and forth between the right jaw and the left jaw, going to, uh, hmm, do I see that? Do I agree with that? I don't know. Does that make sense? Does that add up? Do I, uh, would I do that? Would I be in that situation? Would I do the same thing? It is directly associated with the INFP's ability to empathize and to put themselves in another person's situation and to switch between and compare and contrast different perspectives or viewpoints. Secondly, dissociative darting. So it's uh, when your eye contact is uh, focused inwards and you appear detached from your surroundings but your eyes are still darting back and forth as if there are different things and different variables to think about. Did I consider this or that? And what about that situation? And uh, how does that compare to this situation? Then it's the INFP's goal. And you'll notice this because it contains all of their stress functions. That means they tend to furrow up their nose while tensing the face and also uh, visibly paying more attention like what is that? What are you saying? Can you really mean that? Is that really serious? And it's um, the most visible signal of uh, disagreement from an INFP. Now the most similar symbol of agreement in an INFP is when they relax all their muscles in the face and you see them uh, have that natural uh, smile come out while at the same time their eyes uh, disappear or while their eye contact goes a bit more like dreamy in the quality. Uh, it is a symbol of them putting in something you said or going into something or thinking about something that puts them in a really positive state. So they will most likely do that because you did something nice or you uh, they made them think of something positive or you made them realize something or think about or connect something that they hadn't previously understood. Some general cues are introverting, which is towering. It's uh, lifting your body up a bit and tilting up your head and chin a bit. Uh, showing that you distance yourself from a situation or that you uh, put yourself on the higher ground in a situation. And this is something all introverts do. Then we have dreaming, which is uh, something all intuitives do. It's when the eye quality becomes more lucid and the expression becomes more, in the eyes especially, relaxed. Uh, the eyes appear more faint. The person looks as if they are barely there uh, or that they are not really paying attention or that they're not le really being realistic about something. Now feeling is associated with warmth and as I said warmth primarily comes from the lower part of the face and uh, uh, INFP's warmth uh, is something that you primarily see in this part and so what you'll notice is INFP uh, and feeling types they have a lot more relaxation around the, this part of the face and uh, so they come off as more soft than the thinking types. And then the perceiving types, they have more open-minded expressions and more rounded expressions. They use the whole face in most of their facial expressions rather than just the midline of the face. That means their appearance can come off as unfocused or easily distracted and uh, scattered or a bit chaotic, but also as adaptable and individualistic and authentic.
So this was my breakdown on INFP YouTuber Casual Cognition and I really recommend you check out her channel if you're an INFP especially it's an amazing channel and in this video in particular she really talks about her journey and story and so <laughs> what you'll note this is oh my god these people people are gonna quote me on this uh, <laughs> what you'll see is uh, a really interesting example of what an INFP's life and uh, early childhood and youth can look like and uh, I think there's gonna be a lot of things you relate to if you're an INFP.